You know, uh, the message today is, is a result of uh, a GYB discussion that took place, gosh, by now it's four or five years ago, so I'm really slow in responding. <laughs> but Yeah, you're wondering what I'm getting, but I did actually respond to it, but it's been so long ago now, but, but I wanted to uh, go a little bit more in depth to it, but uh, Dennis Oliver uh, told us a story that, like I said, it's been at least, might be five years ago, but uh, told us a story titled The Broken Pot, and it just stayed with me, and it stayed with me this whole time, and we did talk about it, but I want to talk about it some more, and uh, I want to consider a question as we begin, which is what we usually do. Questions are great to get things going, and I know God always asks us questions, and of course, it's hard responding to God, because you, you're never going to get the answer right, not usually, but anyway, uh, uh, can you think of a single area of your life where you would like people people to know or would like to see you as weak. Yeah, yeah, probably not. Probably not. You don't advertise your weakness on a t-shirt, you know, buy the t-shirt to, this is my greatest weakness and advertise that or wear a sandwich shine, a sign out on the, you know, the front lawn or anything. That, that's not what we usually do. Most of us have never had much of a problem letting people know that we're not perfect I mean, that's easy. Well, I'm not perfect. You know, you're not perfect. No, what we say, nobody's perfect. We like to say that, but, but our vulnerability does not seem to uh, be expressed, and, we do, and it does have its limits. We know that. We know that. A great many of us do not want to be seen as weak, especially men. We don't like to be seen as weak, out in the world especially. In the body of Christ, we, we, we can lean that way. We don't really go the full extent. We can lean that way. We can talk about some of our weaknesses to a certain degree, but we still don't like to be seen as weak. That's just not an attribute or a, a tendency of our temperament that we like to express. That's why a lot of us have trouble uh, in our lives. A great many of us just don't want to be weak. And in those areas where we are weak, we certainly do not want others to know about it. We, you know, we, keep, we try to keep that. In fact, some of us don't even, we think, uh, we don't want God to know about it even. And of course he does, but we don't even bring it up in our prayers. We, we, you know, we're, we're experts. If we ignore it, it doesn't exist. Or if we ignore it, then it'll just go away. We're really good at that. But if we will take an open and honest look at our lives, which I know we're proponents of that. We talk about this every Sunday. We'll take a look at our lives uh, from most recent to distant past. Uh, many of us are going to realize them. Hopefully we will, we will realize if we have not already, we have been where weakness was all that we had left. Who's been there? Honestly, who's been there? Weakness is all you've had left. And that, what a place that is. I'm willing to say uh, that the majority of, of us have come to the place called the end of ourselves. That's a phrase we used to hear a lot. I don't know if we hear that much anymore, but we've been there. A lot of, I think, as I look around, I, I bet everybody here has been there. You know, I've come to the end of myself. Wow, wow. Uh, and, and, and we quickly found out that when you get to the end of yourself, you're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> the Beatles wrote a song about it. He's a real nowhere man. <laughs> Living in nowhere land, you know. We've been where weakness was all we had left. Some of us may be there right now. And I know there'll be a lot of people listening who are there right now. You may be there right now. We've come to face to face with our own weaknesses, the depth of our own weaknesses, and we have no way of knowing how deep that is because we don't like to go there. We have no way, way of knowing what we're going to do. This is one of the primary reasons we avoid our weaknesses because it's unknown to most of us. We don't like to go there. It's, we fear the unknown, and we do not know where we're going to have to go with this. What, what are we going to do? What are we going to say? How are we going to deal with this? And I perceive that more than anything else in our lives, I perceive that a lot of us are afraid of being seen as weak or, or fragile or the big word, broken. Broken. And we forget. We forget that it is written in Psalm that God is close to the broken, the brokenhearted specifically. But God is closest to the broken. We forget that. The irony of this fear is that it's almost inconceivable because we are all broken. 
All of us are. Some of us try to act like we're not. But all of us, or every one of us on this planet, if you're a human being, I've met some of us that, eh, you kind of question it. But if you're a human being, you are broken. We're all broke. We're all defective. We are all in recovery. Every one of us. Not all of us go to groups, but we're all in recovery. As Romans 3.23 clearly and concisely describes, we are all on the short end of the stick. Now that's obviously paraphrased. It's jerry-rigged when I say that. But, but we're all on the short end of the stick. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us. The fact is, it is the pot that thinks they are not broken that has the most damage at all, of all. It's the pot that thinks they're perfectly okay that has the most damage of all. We are all the broken pot. All of us are. Now, we may not have always known how to define it, and there are some of us who have, who have recognized all along that there's no better place to be than at the end of yourself. There's no better place to be than at the end of ourselves. This is where God is the strongest on our behalf. I just want to do that. You know, he's a, that's where God is the strongest on our behalf when we are at the end of ourselves. That's where he's the strongest. Jesus told us in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. That, that's a strong statement. My strength is made perfect in weakness. There's no, no room for this, any other description. When you say perfect, that, wow. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. And Paul's response to this uh, epiphany is a means to the fulfillment of freedom in Christ as you read about it in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now when I turn on the TV and watch televangelists and, and Christian programming, and, and, and I don't hear this. I don't hear this at all. I hear the complete opposite message, and maybe I'm not watching the right program, maybe, but I haven't heard this in, in decades, since it is scripturally accurate that when we are weak, we are strong, then many of us can say that we have never been stronger in our lives. We must be really strong right now. I mean, really, uh, we are being driven beyond where our ego lies, beyond the, the stupid games that we tend to play, beyond our denials, beyond our rationalizations and our excuses. God is pushing us and pushing us beyond ourselves. I, I would like to say he's leading us, but when, to get beyond ourselves, God's got to push us because he, he tries to lead us, but we're like, <laughs> we're pretty stubborn. We're pretty stubborn. God has to push us beyond ourselves. I mean, think about your life. You, you need to be pushed. When you're standing on the edge, it's not like you're going to, you know, gratefully, oh, thank you, Lord, and then jump. He needs to push. He needs to push. It is beyond ourselves where the genuine power of unconditional love thrives and flourishes. You've got to get beyond yourselves to unconditionally love your family. Somebody say amen to that. That, you've got to get beyond yourselves to do that because we all know our families. We didn't choose them. If, we, if God would let us choose our family, it wouldn't have been them. And they say the same thing about us. They do. I've heard them. I've listened in on the phone conversations. I wouldn't choose that Jesus freak. That guy's crazy. You know, un, when God pushes you beyond yourself, that's where you find where uncondition, unconditional love and grace lives, beyond yourself. Because you just want to smack them. The way to get to that destination is through the discovery that you're the broken pot. That we are the broken pot. God's strength is made perfect, not just good, not just powerful, but perfect in weakness. And that's amazing. That's an amazing discovery. Do we really know what this means? I perceive that in order for God to effectively reveal himself in our lives, in incredibly powerful ways, we have to meet the requirement 
of adopting, of taking on a position of weakness before God as a fundamental part of our conception of ourselves. When we come before God, we got to realize, and I know I've said this a lot in the last 20 years, but we do have to really realize He is so God, we are so not. In such, a, in such a way that if we don't do it physically, we need to do it mentally, fall on our face before him in weakness. Because he is God, and we're not. We have to recognize our identity as, as Jesus described his in John 5.30. I can do nothing on my own initiative. Now, I know and that's weakness. That's pure weakness, isn't it? Wow, wow, this is the point of encountering a possible revelation where we can apprehend that this is not American. That, that scripture is, is anti-American. Uh, and I hate to break that to you, but it is. Why, why do I say that? Because our American culture attempts to destroy our ability to relate to God. Why? Because our culture tells us the complete opposite of that. Self-dependence. You, you know, Superman, so to speak. I can do it. I am, I am self-sufficient. I am powerful. Me, me, me. Uh, uh, I live in a culture that emphasizes personal strength and self-competence in my own instinctive ability over anything that appears weak or less than self-sufficient. That's where we live. That's what we're taught from the moment we're born. We're taught to rely on yourself. Be an individual, stand up, and, and you take care of it. Don't cry. What's wrong with you? Don't rely on anybody else. You rely on your own strengths. You don't need anybody else. Be an individual. Stand out. You don't need anybody. Who knows I'm telling the truth? That's your whole life. That's your entire life. That's what you're told in this country. And that's not what Scripture is. He teaches at all. Not at all. That's, I, I, <laughs> this guy's a rebel. Yes, I am. I know. Why am I talking to myself? Because nobody else is listening. It's anti-American, I realize. The mindset, this, this mindset has even polluted the body of Christ. If you take a look and you'll see it's true, we have created churches with superstar pastors who are kept separate from their people. They're kept separate from their people. They're escorted on stage and taken quickly back to their offices after the show is over. I mean, after the service is over. That's what happens. You see it. Some people only get the video of their pastor. That's all. They never even meet him. They never touch him. They never, they never get to make fun of him, and he get, never gets to make fun of them. They don't even eat together. They don't, they don't interact at all. They just see a video of him. People hear gospels of self-empowerment. Self, self, self. You're okay. I'm okay. We're all okay. Let's have a hot dog. And they all go home and they feel good about themselves. Self-empowerment. That carefully selected scriptures that tickle the ears and speak nothing, nothing of sin, nothing of judgment, nothing of hell, nothing of blood, nothing of, of weakness, nothing of self-crucifixion, nothing of the gospel. Nothing. What is going, what is going on? What is going on? We have allowed the glorification of, of a professional class of pastors, of priests, well, you know, just like in the, uh, in the Old Testament, and we send them to leadership conferences and expect them to apply business principles to grow what we call the kingdom of God, and we're so far away from what God intended in the first place. We have fulfilled 2 Timothy 3, 5 through 7. We have a form of godliness, and we've denied the power thereof. This is what makes me so popular. It's the truth. It's the truth. If, if this doesn't change, America will never survive. We will never survive. If this doesn't change, we have to invite Jesus back, back into the church of Jesus Christ. It's the church of Jesus Christ. Man, oh man, it, it, uh, we, have, we, have, we are ever, ever, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth because we refuse to see and be who we really are. We are the broken pot. That's who we are. That's why I wanted to expound on that story that Dennis told us. 
the American way is strength and independence and doing for ourselves. The Jesus way is weakness and dependence on God and one another. That's the Jesus way. That's the only way we're going to survive. The only way. The way of Jesus is being beyond the point where we can help ourselves. Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being in him. Uh, John 15, 5, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. What's the popular phrase? God will never put on you any more than you can handle. You know what? That's a lie. That's not in Scripture anywhere. And how do I know that? Because you are born with more than you can handle. Well, it's called sin. It's why Jesus came. If God would not pour, put any more on you than you could handle, Jesus would not have had to come. You are born with more than you can handle. You are born needing Jesus Christ into your heart. You are born needing a fellowship of believers. You are born needing Jesus in your heart. You're born needing help. And it's okay. It's okay to need each other. It's okay. It's okay that he is, <laughs> His perfect strength is found in your perfect weakness. It's okay because you know what? When you come to the end of yourself is where you find your perfect self. I know that doesn't sound rational. It doesn't sound logical. But you've tried everything else. And it's, the, it's, it's so rational, it's so logical, it won't make sense until you get there. But when you come to the end of yourself, that's when you find your true self. And it's an amazing discovery. It's an amazing discovery. We have to fully embrace the acute awareness of our weaknesses and brokenness so that God can use us in ways we never thought of, in ways we never even considered. Man, I'm living that way now, living in the place of need and dependence on God because that is true discipleship. Need and full dependence on God is true discipleship and teaching others to do the same thing, that's true discipleship. We can read all the books and study all the, the sermons and all the uh, teachings we want, but if they're not showing us how to live in true dependence and need on God through Jesus Christ, we're not discipling anybody. That's what, what this life is all about. It's getting closer and closer till you get to the point. It's not about, well, we used to turn to God only in bad times. And in good times, you forget about God. But when you come to the end of yourself, it's not about good times, bad times, uh, clean times, dirty times, pretty times, ugly times. It's just about every time you look to God. You're just with him all the time. It doesn't matter. It's not about circumstance. It's about relationship. Circumstance doesn't matter anymore. When things are great, you look to God. When things are not so great, you look to God. When things are going wonderful, you look to God. When things are not going so wonderful, you look to God. It has nothing to do with circumstance, period. You're in a relationship. And in a relationship, you're together all the time. When things are going great, hello, Lord. When things are going not so great, hello, Lord. It's not about circumstance anymore. You're a broken pot. And your need is there all the time. It's not about what's going on. It's about you and him, him and you, all the time. The way God saves us, let, let me make a, let me make a statement here, though, I, I need to drive home before I continue on. Self-sufficiency is the greatest illusion ever perpetrated from any source. It's an illusion. It's a lie. It's a lie. We never have been. We never will be self-sufficient. Even those people who claim they are, you should see the people supporting them in the background. You should see. It's a whole network. These people, they, they come out and say, I'm a self-made man. Oh, yeah, you're lying through your teeth. Even your teeth are probably false. You take them out at night. <laughs> They've got a whole group of people that are support, doing everything for them. They've got assistant after assistant. They've got people doing everything, even doing their nails and their feet. They're not self-sufficient. There's no such thing. That's the greatest illusion ever perpetrated from any source. We need each other, and we need God. The way God saves us from our self-sufficiency is by bringing us to the end of ourselves. Dependence on God. We should know by now that, that without God, we only live for ourselves. And living for ourselves, there is nothing worse that could happen to us. 
There is nothing worse that can happen to us than living for ourselves. And most of you here already know that's true. I don't even have to repeat that. You already know that's true because you did that. And boy, that worked out fine, didn't it? It did not. Nothing worse could happen to us than to live for ourselves. 1 Corinthians 1.27, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. I want to live in the reality that if I do not face the truth about myself constantly, I will live in a lie that I am sufficient and God needs to get on the same page with me. And I've done that too long. God doesn't need to get on the same page as me. I want to trust that whether I am ever fully what I think I should be or not, God is sufficient anyway. He is sufficient anyway. God chooses the humble, the lowly, the meek, the weak, the broken. So there's never any question as to about who gets the glory. There's never any question. There's never any question about the source of the power when lives are changed in the world all around us. There's never any question about who is doing it. It is the truth of God and the power of God in that person, not that person. When the person starts getting the glory, you need to run the other way. You need to look the other way. 1 Corinthians 1, 20-21. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made the foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. God's favorite instrument. Yeah, that's pap, that's right. God's favorite instruments are broken pots. And she knows... God's favorite instruments are broken pots so that nobody can boast before God. That, that's how the kingdom works. God chooses whom he chooses so he receives the glory. He chooses broken vessels who leak. Who leak. That's why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because we're supposed to leak. We're supposed to leak. I know a lot of times we, we talk about this. You know, Fill me up with the Holy Spirit, Lord, but I'm not letting any of it out because I want to be blessed. Well, God chooses people who leak broken pots so it can be let out. Instruments so God can wield the instrument and use it for his purposes and his glory. We're almost always the recipients of understanding after the fact anyway. You know, you always look back. Oh, wow, look what God did. Because while it's going on, we're hardly ever, God hardly ever lets us be aware. It's always after the fact. Why? So he gets the glory. Because we know while it's going on, we'll have a tendency to, you know, we have a tendency to think we're special. You're special, all right. You're red pants special. Yeah, you're special, all right. Second Corinthians 12, 9. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, let me share the story that Dennis told us, because this, this will wrap it all together, put it all together. The broken pot. A water bearer in India had two large pots. And I don't want to mess it up, so I've got some notes. Each hung on an end of a pole which he carried across his neck. One of the pots had a crack in it. And while the other pot was perfect and always delivered the full portion of water at the end of the long walk from the stream to the master's house, the crack pot only arrived half full. For two years this went on. He'd carry the pots with the bearer delivering only one and a half pots full of water in his master's home. Of course, the perfect pot was proud of his accomplishments, perfect to the end for which it was made. But the poor, cracked pot was ashamed of his own imperfections and miserable that was only able to accomplish only half of what it thought it had been made to do. After two years of what it perceived to be a bitter failure, it spoke to the water bearer one day by the stream. I am ashamed of myself. And I want to apologize to you. Why, asked the bearer, what are you ashamed of? I've been able for these past two years to deliver only half of my water load because this crack in my side causes water to leak all the way back to your master's house. Because of my flaws, you have to do all this work and you don't get value, full value, for your efforts, the pot said. The water bearer felt sorry for the old cracked pot, and in his compassion he said, as we return to the master's house, I want you to notice the beautiful flowers along the path. 
Indeed, as they went up to the hill, the old crackpot took notice of the sun warming the beautiful wild, wild flowers on the side of the path. And this cheered him up some, but, but at the end of the trail, he still felt bad because it leaked out have its load on the way. And so again, the pot apologized to the bearer for its failure. The bearer said to the pot, did you notice that there were flowers only on your side of the path, but not on the other pot's side? That's because I've always known about your flaw, and I took advantage of it. I planted flower seeds on your side of the path, and every day while we walk back from the stream, you've watered them. For two years, I've been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate my master's table. Without you being just the way you are, he would not have had this beauty to grace his house. Each one of us has our own unique flaws. Every, every one of us has our own weakness. We are all the broken pot. We're all, we could say we're all cracked pots. We could say that. But we're all the broken pot. We all have our own flaws. We're all created that way. But if we allow it, the water bearer, the Lord will use us to bring beauty to the master's table. Instead of thinking of ourselves as flawed or maybe even useless and looking at someone else and thinking, well, they're much more useful than I am, if we just think, well, wait a minute. God is using me, I may not understand it, but God is using me, and one day I will understand this whole time He's using me to bring beauty to the Master's table. In my weakness, God's strength is made perfect. We're all the broken pot. We're all the broken pot. Do not be afraid of what you think is a weakness. Because it's there that God's strength is made perfect. Acknowledge who you are and thank God for that. Thank God for who you are. Every day, every day, thank God for who you are. Because you are bringing beauty to the Master's table. Every day, every day. Please bow your heads with me as musicians come back. 2 Corinthians 13.4 for indeed he was crucified because of weakness, yet he lives because of the power of God. For we also are weak in him, yet we will live with him because of the power of God. Know that in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. Thank him. Just take time this morning before we close out in the song. Take time this morning to thank him for who you are because you are bringing beauty to the master's table.